Good morning, friends. It's my goal today to tell you about all the mistakes that we made starting our homestead and some of our friends made starting their homesteads so that you don't make them. I want you to avoid all these mistakes because they can be a big setback. And I want you to be way more successful than I was when I started this place. Let's talk about it. Welcome inside of our greenhouse. All right, the number one mistake that everybody makes is wasting money. So you're out on your new homestead, you are excited, you are raring to go, you're ready to work, and what do you do? You go out and you buy a ton of different tools that you do not need. You see these other homesteading channels and the things that they have and you rush out and you buy them and it is a waste of money. And then you didn't sit down and research what you actually needed and you bought a tool that's either too large or too small for the jobs that you need it for. Let me show you a few examples of money that we've wasted on tools. When you start your homestead, you're going to need a lot of tools, but just start with the basics. A shovel, a rake, a hammer, and some other things, and that's all you're gonna need to really get rolling. But when you find a cool deal and you've seen somebody else use it before, and you buy things like this little cool chainsaw mill that I've never once touched in seven years, just don't do it. Try to avoid getting things that you are not going to use. You think it's cool, you think you might use it, but just hold off. Save the money and wait till later. I see a lot of other channels with these big wood miser mills that look cool and it looks great because you can make your own lumber, but it's really not for 99.5% of the people out there. Even though we have a lot of trees in this area of East Texas, it's called the Piney Woods, I'm not gonna be selling lumber anytime soon. So just avoid purchases like this and these two items. This is a small 2500 watt champion generator. I think I've used it maybe one time because it was just too small to do the jobs around uh, the property that I needed it to do. And then a cheap four cycle small weed trimmer, which was completely unnecessary because it just cannot handle the jobs that I have for it around this property. It was an impulse buy, I thought it was good, I spent less money on it, and it's kind of useless. And this small chipper here, which for me was a waste of money. Because of the size of my property, I needed something much larger. Although this can handle up to three inch, its small form takes forever to actually chip wood. And I shouldn't have bought it, but I needed something to get rid of all the small things that I was cutting around the property. This wasn't the answer. The answer was to save up Get something much larger that can handle the large stuff here on the property and the volume of things here on the property. Because I use those wood chips to mulch in the garden, around the fruit trees, and they are very, very valuable. So in this case, it was a waste of money and a mistake for me to start small. Another mistake people make is getting a tractor that is too large for their property. You don't need a 40 horse tractor on a two acre property. It's just not necessary. I've had friends that made that mistake and they spent tens of thousands of dollars on a piece of equipment that they don't use very often. For us, we settled for a 25 year old smaller tractor that does the job that it needs to here on the property. And since it was used, it was a lot less money. So don't get caught in the tractor envy trap. Okay, mistake number one and a half, as I call it, because it goes hand in hand with wasting money is not spending enough money on the things that you need to spend it on. And that is not going big enough in the first place to actually get a tool that is properly sized for your property. I mistakenly bought from the previous homeowner his used zero turn mower. That was a little John Deere Z255 that he bought at Home Depot. And while he gave me a good deal on it, it was a waste of money because I didn't understand how tough and big of a machine I actually needed to be able to take care of the tough hay grasses and things here on this property. So I actually should have held off and saved money and borrowed a friends to be able to cut the grass on the homestead. Now the next three things really go together and those can lead to bad purchases on your homestead. One is not doing enough research on a project. Two and similarly is poor planning. And three is getting in way over your head for your skill level. Now we should all always be learning and acquiring skills, but the skills that you have when you first start on your homestead are 
potentially zero. So I'll tell you something about the greenhouse that I'm sitting in now. I originally saw a video by LDS Prepper where he buried corrugated pipe and used that to heat and cool via a geothermal air system, heat and cool his greenhouse. I thought that was amazing and I wanted to do the same exact thing. So when I didn't have a lot of money, when I first moved out here, I bought a ton of corrugated plastic piping. And at that time it was expensive for me. And I was way in over my head. I couldn't dig the trenches properly. And I ran into underground water lines and the telephone line and all of this stuff. And it just never materialized because I really didn't know how to do it. I didn't have the tools to do it. And it, it was a disaster and a waste of money. And friends, there are projects that you don't see that I don't show you on the channel. I may have mentioned them once or twice, but I've never completed them because I did poorly plan and get in over my head. I got really inspired to start market gardening a couple years ago and I started the garden plot on the north side of the property. I haven't fenced it and there's a lot of deer and it needs to be fenced and the fencing is incredibly large. There's no way I can do it by hand. It needs to be done mechanically somehow or with a bunch of other people and it's just sitting there still. But I poorly planned that because I got ahead of myself. I got extremely excited, which is a good thing. You need to plan big. However, I got ahead of my skills and ability and time management for that time. And now it's just been sitting there. Hopefully eventually someday I'll take care of it. Okay, here's one that touches pretty much everything, every point that I've talked about already. And that is buying the entire seed catalog because they put pretty pictures in there, not understanding where those seeds grow best or what area or region they grow best and what varieties grow best and all of the above. Now, seeds aren't terribly expensive, but if you get in over your head and you're paying four or five dollars for a package of heirloom tomatoes that look beautiful and you don't know really how to grow tomatoes properly, then it's just a waste of money. It's poor planning, it's poor research, all of the above. It touches all the points. So what I'm saying is make sure you start small. You take baby steps at the beginning. I know being out on your new homestead, you are so excited. You wanna jump into everything. But don't, because that can lead to a lot of other things like discouragement and wasting money. So along with the seeds goes fruit trees and fruit trees are way more expensive than packets of seeds. They are upwards of $50 a tree now. And it is a big waste of money and poor research to buy a whole bunch of fruit trees that don't grow well in your area. If you can, ask around, ask your new neighbors what grows well. Now this one is gonna sound contradictory but in certain cases it holds true and that is planning too small and not having a vision for the larger picture. Now that holds true with food production. If you understand how much it takes to feed a family of four and you buy a property that's too small. Now maybe that's all you can afford, I do understand that, but you're gonna have to get really creative in being able to grow enough food to feed your family without relying on the grocery store. Although at the beginning, you will rely on the grocery store for many, many years. And I want you to plan big for your property. Everybody recognizes this picture, but if you try to start off and really do everything in this beautiful drawing at once, you are not going to be successful. But you need that big vision. You have to have it or else you're just adding small pieces that might not connect together. You know, in architecture and planning, there's things called phasing. And sometimes you build part of a building and you phase it. Or when you're building a college campus, you do it in phases. You put this building up when you have this amount of money, but you plan for everything else. So it all works in harmony with one another. And that's the same thing on a homestead, right? You plan different areas for future growth. And that has happened with our orchards and, you know, adding grapevines, adding where the bees went and where this greenhouse went. We had smaller things when we started. And then we had a big vision for where all these things would go. Now you can see the lines of these mistakes are blurred together because they all go hand in hand. One leads to the other. And just like I tell you in my solar videos, start small 
and scale up. Start small for your skill level and just to get to understand what it is you are doing and then scale up from there. Don't build everything at once, unless you can. And there are people who can, and I don't discourage that. And there are people who absolutely certainly can afford it, understand how to do it. They go, they hit a big project and they knock it out. But that is not for everybody. I do not want you to get discouraged. And I've talked about getting discouraged on homesteads before. And that's the one of the number one reasons that people leave homesteading and move back to the city. And I do not want that to happen to you. Okay, friends, here's a big one that a lot of people overlook when they buy their homestead property, but that is rushing into it and not understanding what you can and cannot build on the property. You might have that big vision in your head, but when you purchased your property, you better do your research ahead of time to see if you can put in solar panels like this without a permit. If you can build your own house without inspections. If you can raise livestock correctly on that property. If you can grow what you want on that property. All these questions need to be asked ahead of time so that you don't fall into that mistake. Because sadly, a lot of people have to either move if they can afford to move uh, because they cannot raise chickens on their homestead because it's in a suburban edge area of a city and they don't allow it. Or they purchased only an acre and a half and think that they are going to raise cows for feeding their family and gaining milk and all this kind of stuff. That's just not going to happen. Dive in, friends. Dive in now. Plan big, but do your research. And sometimes God just wants you to wait. Take a step back and understand what his plan is for you. Because I can tell you, we almost made mistakes in buying a property out here. We got really excited. We were ready to start. We were overzealous. And thankfully, God closed the doors on several properties before we bought this. As an architect, I had a cool off-grid net zero house that I was going to GC myself and build on a property while I had a two and a half year old tagging along with me. Now, not saying that can't be done, but God knew that I couldn't handle that at this time. And every piece of raw land that we looked at before we found this place, he shut the door on. As a quick example, the property that we looked at first that was on the market for 403 days that we said we wanted to put an offer in on, it sold the day before we got there and we didn't know it. Neither did my agent. Okay, here's one of the last mistakes people make is how to make money on your homestead. Now, a lot of people move out and still have a nine to five job and most people need to do that. They need to keep their job. So do not quit your job. Or if you're moving out to a new area, have that job set in place first. Because only like one and a half million people have the ability to leave their job and retire early, move out to a country homestead and not have to work again. That's just not realistic. And if you want to make money off your homestead, you need to understand what to do first. You need to do all the research and it's going to take numerous years to grow that business. And if you're making money from your homestead, that is a business. And you need to understand if it's goat milk or if it's growing vegetables or if it's selling uh, cattle for beef, whatever it is. So when you do something like that, the initial investment is higher, the initial knowledge base is higher, and you have to have the market for it. So don't move out into an area and figure you're going to sell tomatoes to everybody and you produce these beautiful tomatoes, but there's 900 tomato farmers in the area and their cost is like three cents per tomato and yours is 50 cents per tomato. You're going to have a bad day trying to make money for your family. Okay, friends, I hope that showcasing the mistakes that we've made and mistakes that friends have made and kind of pointing them out helps you. It helps you to get on your country homestead quickly, but plan properly. And I really hope that it makes you more successful than we've been out here on our homestead. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this video right here, which talks about how we installed our very first solar system here on our property. Have a beautiful blessed day. See you next time. Bye.